Well, praise the Lord, everyone. I want to say uh, blessings to those that are going to be watching this later. Sorry, we weren't, we weren't able to go live stream, but uh, Lord's will, this will be available online. So if you're watching it, uh, that took place. It was available. So, all right. So today I want to get into the, uh, the word. Um, the title of my lesson today is Answering the Call. We all have a call on our lives. Excuse me. We all have a call on our lives that um, the Lord wants us to walk in to fulfill that purpose he has for us. So we're going to be in the, the book of Jonah. It's going to be the book of Jonah. So praise the Lord. I'd like to open a quick word of prayer if we could. Lord, we thank you. We come before you humbly today. Lord, speak to our hearts, our minds. Lord, allow healing, deliverance to come. Lord, allow a new dedication to come upon your people today to where we can receive your word and walk in, walk in your word to serve that purpose that you have for us. In the name of Yahshua, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> So starting in uh, Jonah 1, Jonah, before I start reading, Jonah w was known as the reluctant prophet. He was a prophet that was called upon. I'll go ahead and start in verse 1. It says, now, <clears throat> excuse me, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Stop right there and say this. Amittai, being the father of Jonah, excuse me, the devil is a liar, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get through this. Amittai, the father of Jonah, Amittai means truth. Jonah means dove. When you look at the nature of a dove, they're known to flee when they know there's a storm coming danger coming so here we have one the son of truth but yet he finds himself fleeing from the call that God has on his life I'm going to start that verse over now the word of the Lord came to Jonah and Jonah the son of Amittai saying arise go to Nineveh that great city and call out against it for their evil has come up before me but Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. How many knows you can run from God, but you cannot hide? He came down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare, he paid the fee, and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. So here, God's calling him to go to a place that's only possibly 500 miles away, but yet he finds himself fleeing, going almost three times the distance. How many knows it's harder to run from God than it is to pursue what he has for us? We find ourselves exhausting ourselves trying to avoid what he has for us. Amen. God's word is still going to go forth, whether we decide to walk in his will for us or not. It'll be our choice if we decide to pursue that. There's a little bit of Jonah in all of us. So that's where we have to decide, are we going to answer to God's call? Are we running from what God has called us to do? Jonah was called to serve his enemy, just as Yeshua was called to serve his enemy. Sometimes the word or call that God puts on our lives isn't what we want to hear. We can't wait around for the word that we think God should have for us. 
Sometimes it's going to be uncomfortable. Majority of the time it might be uncomfortable because it goes against the flesh. Amen. But it's for His glory, not ours. Amen. We might not want the word He has for us. It might make us uncomfortable. We look at David. Did David want to fight Goliath? No. We look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Did they want to go into that furnace? No. They had a purpose. We look at Daniel in the lion's den. We go on and on. We look at Abraham, who was given a promise, but yet was asked to sacrifice his son. And then we go to the ultimate of our Savior, Messiah, our King, Yeshua. Did he want to die? No, but he loves us. Amen. So here we have Jonah. He goes down to get on this ship that's going to go out of Tarshish. That's almost a whole nother sermon right there. Because where God has a purpose, there's always going to be other options. There's always going to be a ship that you can jump on. And if you don't know where you're going, the people that's on that ship will be glad to take you where they're headed. So we need to walk towards the call that he has on our lives. I'm going to continue reading down. I'll pick up in uh, verse 3, uh, verse 4, I'm sorry. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea. There was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners, the sailors, were afraid, and each cried out to his God, and they hurled the cargo that, it, that was in the ship into the sea to lighten, to lighten it for them. Then Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had laid down and fell fast asleep. Are we falling asleep on uh, what the Lord wants us to do? I, I mean, this I'm preaching to myself, guys. This is, uh, th there's a lot to learn from this. So the captain came and said to him, what do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call out to your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish. Then they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots. They got to get this figured out. That we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. They said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and what people are you? And he said to them, Okay, they're wanting information now. They're wanting to know, okay, we need to figure this out because our lives are in danger. Forget about our, our mission, our cargo. Our lives are in danger. we got to get out of this. What does Jonah say? The very first thing he says to them, I am a Hebrew. He knew his identity. Part of us walking in the call God has on our lives is knowing our identity, knowing who we are. He says, I fear the Lord, <clears throat> the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Something I caught this morning as I was reading through this again. He says the sea and the dry land. When he was spewed out of that whale's mouth, he went from the sea straight to the dry land. Amen. So, I mean, it's almost like prophetic here. He's speaking what God's going to do. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was... He was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. 
That's a scary place to be, to be fleeing God's presence and be aware of it. Amen. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the seas may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more treacherous, or I'm sorry, tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up, hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. You know, here we see God called Jonah to go to Nineveh. We see the sailors here having more mercy and grace towards Jonah than he had for Nineveh. You know, that had to that had to do something to him. I would, you know, I would I would think that would get his attention a little bit. Amen. Nevertheless, verse 13. Nevertheless, the man rode harder to get back to dry land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore they called out to the Lord, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not on us innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as, as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and hurled him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its rage. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, sacrificed to the Lord, and made vows. You know, that the first part of that verse says the men feared the Lord. If we're going to walk with God, we have to have a fear for Him. Amen? And once we have that fear for him, we're able to bring him our sacrifices and make vows to him that, Lord, we see what you've done. Now we're going to do our part. So walking in the fear of the Lord is it's vital to you know our call. So here we see, okay, we got God's attention. And the Lord appointed... He appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. So here you have Jonah out there, probably dog paddle, paddling around, not knowing the next thing is going to happen. He goes from that to being in the belly of a great fish. The good thing about that is he had enough time to himself to think about what was going on. Amen. So as he's there by himself, you know, pondering in his, the conditions he's in, what's going on, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Sound familiar? Amen. It was a sign of Jonah that Yahshua used. Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish, saying, he knows it's time. Now I got I to gotta talk to God. I'm at, I'm at the, the end of my road here, and it's not looking too good for me. Thank God he's the God of second chances. But better than that, he's a God of more than second chances. I think I used my second chance a long time ago. So here we see in chapter 2, starting down at verse 2, says, this is Jonah's prayer. He's calling out to God. He says, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Shul I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the flood surrounded me. And your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. Yet. I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep, or I'm sorry, yeah, the deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head. 
at the root of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever, yet you brought up my life from the pit. O Lord my God, when my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you and to your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope, steadfast love. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. So in his prayer, he's identifying where he's at. He's identifying his distress. He's identifying his need for the Lord to intervene. And that's exactly what happens. The Lord spoke to the fish, and it says the fish vomited Jonah up upon dry land. I, you know, I'm trying to think about that. I mean, it don't really sound like too pleasant of a picture to imagine. But as I was thinking, it's like, uh, okay, so he vomits Jonah onto dry land. This is pretty cool. Everybody check this out. Check this out. Okay, so you have possibly, there could have been a multitude there, not knowing what was coming. Okay, what does the Lord want him to do? He's wanting him to go to Nineveh. Nineveh was a, it was a, it was a great city. It's called a great city. Great city that was built on paganism. They worshipped the fish god, Dagon. So here you have a great pagan city worshiping a pagan god, the fish god. This fish god was known to have basically a hat that was the head of a fish on a man that went down to almost a merman with feet, I, I, to my understanding. Okay, so this this got me excited. If we just walk in his call, God will take care of the rest. Because check this out. Who knows who's seen what happened of him getting vomited up on the land and went before him. Because this is what this city was looking for. They believed that because of the God that they worshipped, they believed that all of their spiritual guidance was going to come from the heart of the seas and the waters okay so what does god do he sends jonah in there with the greatest fish story these people are ever going to hear yeah so i would say he knows what he's doing amen just so cool how you know, you, you can take pieces of the puzzle in, in, in a lot of our situations. You know, we don't know what it is that we're walking in necessarily or why we might be walking in it. But the Lord's putting all these pieces and he's bringing it together that not only as long as you're doing your part, but he is moving. He's making a way. He's causing things to come about to where. His will will be done, with or without us. Amen? So, <clears throat> amen. So Jonah goes to Nineveh. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the uh, message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey and breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he, he called out. This is the word that the Lord sent him with. It says, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 
yet 40 days. He walked around the city, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. As he's doing this, he did not want God's mercy and grace to come to these people. He wanted Nineveh destroyed. But yet he's walking in the will that God had for him to go and speak to the people of Nineveh. You know, there's there's times that we're probably not going to want what might be God's will. And it's going to take a sacrifice. But again, my flesh is weak, but my spirit is willing. Amen. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. If you don't know what sackcloth is, it was made of goat's hair. It was very uncomfortable but they were putting themselves in a state of mourning, submission, repentance. So they would cover themselves with a sackcloth and humility. The word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth. The king, being the political leader of Nineveh, came to a point of repentance. Imagine if we had that in our country, if our political leaders could come to a point of repentance. It says he removed his robe. He removed his royalty. He put himself aside to allow God to step in. We can't expect God to step into our lives and us still want to be in control and do it on our terms. So the word reaches the king of Nineveh. He removes his royalty. He covers himself with a sackcloth and sat in ashes, repenting. And he issued a proclamation published through Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. They called on a fast. Let them not eat or drink, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Let them call out mightily to God. So here you have an evil people that sees the mighty power of God and is drawn to a place of repentance. That's powerful. Let everyone turn from his evil ways and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows, God may turn and relent and turn his fierce, uh, fierce anger so that we may not perish. <clears throat> God, <clears throat> excuse me. God did that. He spared, he spared them because of their repentance. And yet Jonah is still wanting them destroyed. God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways. God relented. Of, God relented of the d disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. God spared them, but here we still have Jonah, the one that God called. Word came forth to him, and he was running. 
Jonah becomes angry with the Lord's compassion. Verse 1, chapter 4. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? This is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful. Mm. Trying to stop the compassion of the Lord. Imagine if he withheld that from us. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, or anger, and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Jonah would rather die than to see God's mercy come to these people. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Jonah went out of the city. He sat to the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He went off. He wanted to watch from a distance to see what would unfold. He wanted destruction to still come to these people. He sat under, under it in the shade till he should see what would become of the city. Now the Lord God appointed a plant. It's time for Jonah to learn a lesson. The Lord appointed a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might be shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. Oh, yeah. That's easy to get excited about the things that bring favor to us, the things that makes our life better. But when dawn came up, the next day, God appointed a worm that attached to the plant so that it withered. See, God's got all control. It don't matter what, what we think, what we do. He's going to navigate the situation the way that he wants and a lot of times it could be just to teach us a lesson. Amen. Hopefully, the hope is that we learn. We learn from that. Amen. When the sun rose, God appointed a scorching east wind. And the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. I can't imagine standing in, in between somebody's victory, somebody's salvation, maybe because of laziness, maybe because of other priorities in our lives. There's always going to be that boat. There's always going to be other options. But that doesn't mean that there's more than one way. There's only one way. Amen. He said, do you do well to be angry? I'm sorry, I went down too far. I'm going to back it up to God appointed. God appointed a scorching east wind. And the sun beat down on his on the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he said, Yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. Angry enough to die. And the Lord said, you pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in the night and perished in the night. 
a sound or and should I I pity Nineveh that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also much cattle you know he's telling Jonah here says you'll have pity on this plant that you had no involvement on. You're pitying, pitying this plant because of what it's bringing to you, to your comfort, your satisfaction. Saying, how can you pity this plant and not allow me to pity Nineveh? He said, I created the plant. I created the worm. He says, and I created Nineveh. I created those people. He says, I still love those people. Even if they don't love me yet, he says, I still love those people. So today, I ask, are you answering the call that God has on your life? Are we walking in a way that is going to not only bring glory to God, but help those around us you know find the lord you know it's the the way that we walk and the sacrifices we make for ourselves walking in his ways walking in his truth that becomes a testimony and when you're walking that way you don't always have to speak people watch how you walk and lord help me because i want to walk in a way that is a testimony of witness to these people and if it is a matter of me setting aside the things that I want, my pleasures, the pleasures of this life that we pursue. And, you know, the thing is, a lot of us, we don't intentionally pursue the luxuries of this life. Not always. Sometimes we just start accumulating things. You know, we start accumulating the nice cars, the nice houses, and that's okay. You know, it's, it's okay to be blessed, but we can be over-consumed to the point where we lose focus on our mission. We lose focus on allowing the Lord to lead us to where we can have pity on those around us that God loves, and we can be that light for them. So today, my challenge for each and every one of us is that we check our hearts, check check our lives, examine ourselves. Say, Lord, let that hunger grow in me to where I can't get enough. You know, I, I want more of you. I want more of your will. Let me die daily. Let me pursue you. There's a lot of options out there, but there's only one way. Amen. Don't wait for God to give you the word that you're looking for. A lot of times it's probably going to be the one that we don't want to hear, but that's okay. He has a plan. We might not want to hear it. Two things that still pleases the Lord is faith and obedience. God wants us to walk in that. And if we can walk in faith and obedience, it'll bring us to a point of submission to where we will be able to walk and answer the call that he has on our lives. Amen. We're going to We have a song that we're going to close this service out with. We'll do announcements after the song. But as we play this song, I would like for all of us to just talk to God and ask him to check us, to check our lives, that we may walk in the fullness, the full purpose that he has for us, for us to be pricked in our heart, to be able to fall in love with